folks, yes it's me again and we're back to take a look at hypervisors, in this case a type 2 hypervisor. Uh, the previous video on virtualization was a while ago so you might want to um, look and see if you can find it. Uh, if I can find it I'll put a link in the hoo-ha bar. But um, long story short about hypervisors is they allow a machine to run in another machine, sort of like matrix for computers. <laughs> so what is a type 2 hypervisor? Well, if I can find it, <laughs> uh, where is it? Is it under wine? No. Wine is emulation. Um, <laughs> where the heck is it? Ah, there it is, under accessories. Virtual box. Now, virtual box is one of the various bits and pieces of software that are um, type 2 hypervisors, basically. Uh, a type 1 hypervisor is the root operating system itself, but this is a type 2 because it is a piece of software which is running on another operating system. So I'm going to try a bit of zooming in here and um, yeah, <laughs> I'm having a bit of trouble with the zoom, but <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> less said about that the better. So here you can see on the left hand side that we've got the operating systems that are under this hypervisor. Now we're going to generate one in a bit. In the previous video you saw that I have a license for XP and running on a hypervisor does not uh, get you around any licensing restrictions. In fact it can make them a bit more awkward. <laughs> especially with operating systems that check for things like hardware changes and then say hey I've noticed too many changes here so you're going to have to revalidate. Um, hypervisors will not save you from that um, so you've got to be careful about that sort of thing. You can see that this one is named XP and the operating system is haha <laughs> Windows XP 32-bit funny that. I've assigned it um, some system memory and some processors. If we have a look at the host itself, um, which is under here somewhere, um, oh yeah the zoom is really causing me some grief. <coughs> Administration, um, is it under here? System uh, resources, uh, what am I looking for? System monitor, there we go. You can see that this particular machine has uh, four cores to it and in terms of memory it's got um, 8 gig loaded. Um, so what I've done is said OK. Of those, um, just close that, <coughs> yeah this is driving me nuts. <laughs> of those four cores and of the 8 gig of RAM that's on this machine, I'm going to give two of those cores and 3 gig of RAM to this uh, virtual machine. Um, there is acceleration on there <laughs> and it does also have some display memory that I've given it. It does have the 3D acceleration software loaded but, more on that in a bit, it doesn't seem to be um, working properly for me for some strange reason. You also see storage, more on that in a minute, but um, it's got a VDI file which I've assigned uh, just over 40 gig. The optical drive is empty and if I come down here you can see some more bits and pieces. The host is Pulse Audio um, Network, we've assigned the, the network card to it in bridged mode. Um, it does have a USB controller, there's no shared folders and I haven't given it a description. Uh, if we go into the settings for this virtual, virtual machine we can alter things. So we've got the name, type, version, um, under advanced um, there's a snapshots folder, more on snapshots in a bit, um, shared clipboard, disabled, it can share the clipboard with a host operating system, you've also got drag and drop, um, select switch data will be copied between the guest and the host by drag and drop. You can do those sorts of things thanks to the host software that's installed. Um, any dis dis 
description. You can enable encryption for the virtual machine if you wish. Um, you have the system options. You can see that we've got the slider for how much uh, memory to assign. Um, we've got <laughs> our boot order, just as we would uh, in the BIOS. The chipset, the chipset that we're going to use. Uh, the pointing device, in which case we're going to use USB tablet. Um, yeah, long story short, it'll it'll name um, emulate. Um, well, in fact, let's just emulate the standard PS2 mouse. You've got a st extended features um, processor. You can assign cores. Um, limits the amount uh, execution cap. Limit the amount of time that each virtual CPU is allowed to run for. So I can actually, I think we've got four physical, um, eight virtual or something like that. Um, we've only assigned two because that's all we need for this. And we've got acceleration, uh, power virtualization. Uh, yeah. Long story short is you can mess around with these and um, read up more on them. I think some of the critical ones are storage. Um, as you can see, the controller for this, um, IDE controller, that's what we've given it, uh, the various type of controller. Now this is a file. And what's going on here is that this file is emulating another hard drive. As far as the host is concerned, this is a 41 gig file that's sitting like other files. But to the virtual machine, it will be its hard drive. You can also tell it that it's solid state, um, how, how it's going to behave. Ideally, you want to set all this up before you start. And it is fixed size storage. Now, there's two types. Um, one is thin provisioned, one is thick. If you choose thick, it will generate a file 41.8 gig in size, and that's it. If you leave it as thin, then it will expand the file size as it needs up to the maximum of the virtual hard disk size. Personally, I tend to choose fixed because then I know the, the space is allocated, it's gone, that's it. Whereas if you choose thin provisioned, um, you could potentially <laughs> run out of disk space on the host when the, um, when the virtual machine wants to grab more space. You can see here that we have an empty um, optical drive and uh, we can actually assign a file to that. So we can choose a virtual optical disk file, which would be an ISO file, and we could select that. And as far as the guest operating system is concerned, that's its um, CD. And we can choose whether to make it behave as a live CD or not. I'm not gonna mount one here. You have audio, um, which is to enable the controller that it's gonna map to. Network is another interesting one. You can have up to four adapters here, and you can enable them. Um, attached to the bridge adapter in this case. You've got various options. You've got various uh, advanced options for it. Cable connected or disconnected. Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> so you can choose to virtually plug in the virtual cable. In this case, we're gonna leave it. You can also have various serial ports, USB drivers, um, which version controller, shared folders. Now you can actually share a local machine folder or any other folder with the guest operating system and you have the user interface. Now, in this case, um, we've got these settings, so I'm just gonna cancel that and I'm actually gonna zoom out and start this virtual machine. Now, because this operating system will be running in a piece of software which is itself running in another operating system, it's going to be a bit slower. <laughs> How far you go, who knows. So we're just going to start this. As you can see, you're typically getting um, some sort of standard uh, BIOS start and all the rest of it. Um, and there we go. Here we go. XP is running. <laughs> um, it's starting up. You'll notice that we've got an extra menu down here that will enable us to do things on the fly. Like we can change various mouse integra integration options, devices, we can attach or detach optical drives all from this menu. 
There is also another piece of software installed on this which is the VirtualBox Guest Editions. Now that is a piece of software which is running in the operating system which allows it to more easily talk with um, the VirtualBox software that it's running inside. That sort of thing helps. This uh, particular virtual machine is used for uh, the majority of stuff that I do for the BBC Model B. Um, and all the moving files around, there's another emulation here, there's various uh, BBC disk drive format files and all the other bits and pieces that I use because um, unfortunately a lot of the BBC supports types of things are um, um, fan written and most of them are written for uh, Windows and DOS as opposed to Linux which is one reason why I use the virtual machine. Um, I'm also going to start up Pets which is one old piece of software and it'll give you an idea mm. for how fast this is running. There's my little cat. There you go. This is software that we ran in the, the mid 90s. <laughs> there you go. and the rest of that jazz. <laughs> the water, the basket itself. Uh, how do I grab the basket? <laughs> yeah, hungry cat. <laughs> oh, there, why don't you? So you can pretty much see what's going on here. If I ask for the task manager, and you can see the performance, CPU usage history, it can see the uh, memory that it's been assigned, uh, which is the three gig. As far as it's concerned, it's running on a, its own piece of hardware, but there you go. <clears throat> and even though it's running pets, <laughs> it's hardly doing any work at all. You can also do all the other usual things in here, like, um, oh, of course, I'm in pets. <laughs> I'd have to minimize it somehow. Um, let's just close it somehow. Uh, exit pets. Now we've got control of the desktop again. You can see all the usual stuff. Um, let's just stop that. I don't know where it's going. Where's the stop on this? News.bbc.co.uk. <coughs> there you go. We're currently now connected to the internet and we're using Firefox, etc., within uh, an operating system which itself is running on an operating system. <laughs> How do you fancy that? <sighs> Speed um, and having to assign resources is the obvious downside of this. Um, so although things like VirtualBox will allow you to do and get around various restrictions, it's coming at the cost of um, performance is the long story. Um, I did actually have it so that um, on an earlier machine I had Windows XP running on one monitor and um, Linux, well Linux was the host basically and uh, I had access to it via the other monitor and I could uh, I enabled the features that allowed me to drag and drop between the two operating systems. So we're going to set an, up a new one here. I'm going to set up a new one. I'm going to call it Linux. Uh, we're going to give it um, probably about the same um, version. Uh, who knows? It's going to be uh, Ubuntu 64-bit I think. Um, Let's just give you the memory again. Um, create a virtual hard disk now. Um, we could use an existing file if we wanted to, but no. So we're going to uh, create this. Okay, file location. So I'm going to say is virtual boxes, Linux, Linux VDI. So it's already gone into the usual place. We're going to ask it to, um, we're going to want we're going to give it just, um, I'm just going to set this up as a test so it's going to get deleted. 30 gig, um, it's going to be a VDI file, we've got different hard disk file types depending on what you want to use. 
and depending on how portable you want the virtual machine to be. And we're going to make it fixed. This is where we could either have dynamically allocated or fixed size. I prefer fixed. So we're just going to create that and the hard drive is going to be made. One large file on the guest operating system. As you've probably guessed, um, this enables the virtual machine to be moved between physical machines. How fast, uh, or how far you can push this before um, various drivers get in the way and start screaming for um, re-authentication, who knows? Depends on what operating system you're running. Um, you can tie down connectivity so you can effectively create a sandbox. The other thing you can do is create snapshots. Now what a snapshot allows you to do is um, when you run um, a virtual machine by taking a snapshot and then running the virtual machine any changes you made are recorded. So if you want you can actually revert back to the previous snapshot and effectively wipe out all the changes that you'd made on the run that you've just done, if that makes sense. So it's a far more powerful version of um, um, pardon me um, what do they call the feature in Windows? Um, well, you know where you take, uh, you roll back the machine to a previous state. You're literally, in this case, rolling back the entire machine, including any files that you've put on the hard drive. So it's an easy way to try things and then go back to another snapshot. And um, there we go. So here we are, it's powered off. I'm going to go into the settings and I'm going to go, uh, let's have a look. Um, yeah, motherboard processor, we're going to give it two cores. Um, display, yeah, we're going to give it the whole thing. Storage, it's already got. Uh, the CD, we are going to choose a virtual optical disk file. And I've got a 64-bit ISO file, so we're going to load that. Um, audio, yeah, network, we'll attach it to a bridge adapter. Um, uh, what am I looking for? <laughs> We're not going to, well, we'll, we'll enable 2D uh, video acceleration. Um, storage, uh, where's the boot order? <laughs> General, advanced description, encryption, system. Oh, here we go, floppy, we won't bother with floppy. So we're going to boot to optical and hard disk. So now what's happened is we've got our hard drive, we've got our virtual hard drive, we've connected um, a CD. So when we start this, what will happen is the virtual CD will kick in and it will boot from that. And there you go. <laughs> it's automatically booted. Um, five, four, three, two, one. Start Linux Mint. And there we go. So this is now running from the ISO file. Uh, you'll notice a few things. The mouse um, is running <laughs> between the machines. It's going in there and coming out. You can also run in full screen. Um, view full screen road mode is host and F. Seamless, scaled, adjust Windows file. Boom, boom. Yay, we're running in software rendered mode. Right, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, preferences display. Um, <laughs> ah, there it is. <laughs> Gets a bit difficult at times. We're going to up the resolution here to that and we're going to apply it. Bing! Keep this configuration. Right, it knows that we're running in software rendered mode without 2D hardware um, because we haven't installed uh, anything yet. So we're going to install Linux Mint. It's going to go off and look at it. English, yep, continue. Install third-party software for graphics and other media, yep. Yeah, da 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 da.
<clears throat> okay, erase disk and install mint. If we go somewhere else, uh, something else, and it, you can see what's going on. We have the device, SDA, and as far as it's concerned, there's the 30 odd gig that we've assigned it. So um, yeah, we can go back um, confident in what we're doing, uh, confident that we're going to erase and install just within a file. <laughs> Write the changes to disks, yes. And there we go, we're in London, continue, blah blah. English UK, um, uh, test machine, uh, test machine, login automatically, continue. <clears throat> so what's happening now is it's taking from the ISO, making believe that it's uh, a CD-ROM, <laughs> and writing out to the hard disk. Now I'm not sure how this zoom is going to work, but you can see down here that we have the activity LEDs for um, the network, um, the virtual CD-ROM and the virtual hard drive. Uh, you've got various other bits and pieces you can control around here. The mouse pointer is captured, indicates uh, what various settings that you've got. Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, you've got all the settings down there and this is now installing um, Linux Mint on a virtual machine basically. <laughs> Almost finished copying the files! Yay! <sighs> Yawn eventually. <clears throat> As you can see it's not too bad if I call up the resources for the host operating system, you'll see roughly um, what's going on uh, system monitor. All right, you can see uh, side by side what's happening. You can see that uh, a number of the CPUs are, well, it's not too bad to be perfectly honest. Um, finished copying files, blah, 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 blah. You can see that a large chunk of the memory has now been given. Even though the virtual machine is the, the only one that's running, it has permanently allocated at least 3 gig of its own RAM into the virtual machine. So the host can't use that anymore. But, you know, as you can see, we've got plenty. Um, you can tune and tweak these figures as and when you become more uh, comfortable using virtual machines. <clears throat> it's up to the host to assign um, resource to the virtual machine as and when they're requested. So you'll probably find that um, the guest will actually jump uh, between CPUs, for example. Um, it's, uh, it basically requests computational units from the host and the host will determine what to grant it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. Eventually. Um, you can mount um, shares and you, you would probably have to install other software as well. As we'll see in a minute. <laughs> I hope, eventually. Come on. It would be possible, of course, for me to run Windows XP on um, and give it pretty much all <laughs> the resources if I wanted. But obviously, as you know, there's restrictions within XP as to how many, uh, how much RAM it can use and all the rest of that jazz. You can also install Windows 7, Windows Vista, and we're installing Linux here pretty much. And this is an ideal way to test things out and to have resources and a different operating system available to you without needing another physical machine. Other than the slowness issue, um, the only other serious issue that I've had is with 3D, um, 3D uh, graphics and giving the guest access to the, the 3D acceleration on the host. I have had problems with that, but um, pretty much that's about how that goes. Um, 
<clears throat> so I wouldn't use it to um, load Linux and play. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't use it as a method of playing Windows games on Windows on Linux, if that makes sense. So uh, purely because it needs access to the 3D and that's what gives it some grief. Um, installation is finished. Uh, restart now. So that's now going to restart and while it's doing that I'm going to say optical drive um, right please remove the installation medium optical disks um, choose disk image uh, well cancel um, um, you can actually launch I can I can actually mount the hosts own optical drive so I can actually tell it to look at um, the um, CD stroke DVD unit which is actually on the host system itself. How do I remove the disk from the virtual drive? Uh, we'll go for the host just for the sake of that for the moment and then we'll press enter. <coughs> so that will now ignore that and drop straight through to the operating system. And there we go. It's starting. <laughs> Running in software mode. So we are going to, now that we're here, administration, um, display, wherever that is. No preferences, display, get it right. Um, give it a bit more resolution. That'll do. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to um, install the guest add-ons CD. I'm not sure if it's valid for Linux, but we're going to, whoops, get rid of that. Ah, there we go. Virtual box editions, um, autorun.sh, yeah, run in terminal. Okay, do you wish to continue anyway? Yes. Now that will install the extra software that allows this version of Mint to talk with the um, top level itself. The Virtual Box Guest Editions. So I can pretty much do anything that I like now here. And pretty much we are now up and running. I can go to um, anywhere really. <laughs> Uh, let's try youtube.com forward slash. Let's try some of my own videos if I can get at them. Yay! There we go. Um, so, pretty much, we can do everything from here. They could kill your kidneys. At best, you'll wind up on dialysis. <laughs> yeah, very pleasant. So even if we had forgotten things, they would have provided. So not only were the ingredients provided, but there was also some wine later. As you can see what's going on uh, with the lunch, CPUs on the left. Uh, only one of them, um, well, it's it jumping around. Yeah, two of them are starting to really feel the pressure. Well, no, I'd say really feel the pressure. They aren't really. So you can see what's running. Uh, this is still actually building. Um, oh, right. <coughs> Uh, let's go back a bit. Let's try some gaming. Um, yeah, part one, Island Bound. I just see it on the right hand side. Um, yeah, and there's another one over there. That's interesting, right ahead. Um, you can yeah. see that the resolution isn't the best. Exactly why I'm not 100% sure, Whatever but there we go. Yeah, it's, it's probably to do with what is detected from the speed and probably the player isn't um, downloading that. So what we'll try and do is uh, go into the driver manager and see what it says. Updating, yeah they are. 
eventually, <laughs> I hope. Right, here we go. You can see that the drivers are now showing um, the virtual box guest drivers. Not working AMD microcode. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's actually sat on top of an AMD uh, CPU. Um, <clears throat> but those are now um, the VirtualBox graphics adapter is now installed, as is the guest service. So proprietary drivers are now in use. We'll probably need to um, ultimately um, update the system, um, which would probably gain some extras. We're going to reboot this, uh, restart, and see if that makes any difference to the video, to the speed, that is. <laughs> Ta-da! Running in software rendering mode. Um, how do we sort that one? <laughs> oh, let's imp devices optical. Let's just remove the disk from the virtual drive. Force unmount. Okay, so that's the CD um, should be gone. There you go. Uh, let's get back to this and see if we can go via our history. Um, history? Yeah, Steve Crusoe. See what happens. Regular oak. So yeah, it's still a bit low. Um, we haven't enabled hardware acceleration. Yeah. Uh, much oh, more I think we've done it. Just going to take a look outside, and yeah, we've got stuff falling. Um. But there you go. That's at least giving you a flavour of um, of, of type two hypervisors. Um, a quick discussion on how they sort of work, how they sort of don't work. Um, once you've started playing around with them and getting used to bits and pieces, um, you'll be sorted. Uh, as at the moment, we're just going to shut this one down. I'm going to close that down. That's going to eventually be switch off. That's saying it's powered off, and we are. We could actually do snapshots. Um, yeah, it's going to be up to you to really have a messing with this, have a mess around with this. So we're going to remove it. Um, you can either remove the settings or you can delete the files, which includes deleting the um, the VDI file as well, the, the virtual hard disk. That's done, that's gone. Oh yeah, snapshots are up there. So you've got current state, take a snapshot, revert, delete, and what the heck is the sheep? Oh, clone, <laughs> clone the selected virtual machine. Oh, pardon me. So there you go. That's uh, a quick look at um, Type 2 hypervisors, and it's up to you as to, you know, it's just another one of those tools in the toolbox um, that's available for you, and it's up to you if it's of any use to you and how you use it. Um, so, there you go. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.